It's always just between us, all right? Welcome into Between Us and 938 Live. I'm Angela Lim, and as always, we're discussing relationship issues that matter to you and also are sharing some inspiring stories from our everyday heroes. Speaking of everyday heroes, Helen Lim is my guest today, and Helen is founder of Silver Spring Singapore. Today, we're going to talk a bit about how seniors can age actively and also find re employment while building really great relationships with people in the workplace as well. Helen, thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me, Angela. Let's talk a bit about Silver Spring because, you know, initially the idea was to kind of reach out to seniors who wanted to find uh, re employment. Tell us a bit about some of the challenges that, you know, your clients come to you with. Yes. When I first started in 2009, <clears throat> I was uh, thinking it was just about some people who have retired too early and they just want to come back to uh, just find something meaningful to do, something to just feel occupied. No? But because I started in 2009, it was a time of the financial crisis. And because of the downturn and because of the number of restructuring happening, not only in Singapore, but around the world, I find that I was having a lot of people who were actually restructured out of their jobs, uh, not according to their will. In fact, they were so surprised because they've suddenly lost their corporate identity. But at the same time, they needed to continue working to get some re-employment because of uh, uh, f- uh, livelihood needed, uh, family commitments and mortgages to pay. Mm. So I find that this group that require uh, uh, desperately to find jobs back uh, was, was the most pressing, mm. uh, rather than just the cruising people who were just exploring in, in, in a relaxed way. Mm. So that gave me, my, for myself, an awakening that there was uh, a lot more needed, you know, to address this issue of getting mature job seekers back to work. Right. And, you know, you've already highlighted two concerns, Helen. One is the the need for finances. Maybe the person might need some more uh, money coming in in order to support their lifestyle. Or it could also be that, you know, the loss of that self-identity that you've created over so many decades, even sometimes uh, in the corporate world. So when people come to you and they do ask you for, for help in getting a job, Often you don't get the same kind of job that you were retrenched from or that you left, you know, in the corporate world. So what are some challenges that are faced there? Yes, lots of challenges. Uh, but at the same time, you feel very fulfilled when you can find something for them that is matching according to their new needs. Mm. And I, I say this as I go through a, a journey of some five years by, by now, that um, first of all, they lost their corporate identity. Then they realized they could be in high-level jobs, but it's no more there. Somebody has taken their cheese away. But um, they have to be realistic. They have to be practical. They, they need to very quickly re-career, rethink in their mind. What yeah. else can they do? You know? So uh, uh, our role in Silver Spring is to provide a platform to help them, uh, first of all, take stock of their uh, their, their, their transferable skills, their experiences, and what else they can do besides their, their job that is already gone. Mm. Uh, so in, in that instance, I find that there's a ready group of people that are willing to re-career into something uh, perhaps totally different, not just uh, a, a smaller in the same capacity. So that was very interesting. Yeah. Secondly, the other group that came uh, where they are financially fine, but they want to wake up in the morning with some purpose. And they said that perhaps this, uh, this is a group, uh, uh, one of them, uh, 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 a big number of them are those who have come back from overseas with rich experience, you know, like five, ten years of assignment in China or, or some other place. They tell me they, they breathe the, the foul air, they <laughs> drink the dirty water, yeah. and yet, you no, know, uh, their rich experience is with them. Mm. It's not something you can find in the textbook. And these experiences, they want to share and contribute back to society mm. through the corporate life by mentoring the younger people in sharing their regional experience and, and, and the way to negotiate. And I, I find that um, it is such wasted resources if there's no one helping to address them in terms of uh, matching them mm. back to something meaningful. Indeed, and I think it comes from both sides as well. You know, the seniors themselves wanting to go out and contribute and share their wealth of experience. And on the other hand, you know, people from the younger generations are being 
you know, embracing, being, you know, being welcoming them with open arms back into the workforce as well. Uh, on two levels, we have to address this. We'll talk about how to do that in just a bit. But I want to find out what you think as well. You know, you mentioned that sometimes it can be quite tough to adjust your expectations, especially if you're used to a certain job role or a certain pay scale uh, back in the day when, you know, you were still working. How do you tell, you know, your clients or, or help them adjust their expectations? Over a period of time, and it, it didn't take too long for many mature people to really come to their senses. Um, I think after they got through the shock, especially those who have been restructured out, and um, uh, either learning through reading in the news or, or through friends sharing, they realize they cannot hang on. Mm-hmm. They cannot have the same baggage if they want to continue to live. And month after month, if they, it goes by where they, they keep banging against the wall in terms of uh, being able to find the same job with the same pay at the same level, mm. and knowing that no responses at all, that awakening comes actually quite, quite quickly to many. Mm. I think the, sometimes the thinking out there is that many people are so stuck, but But from my experience, talking to them, many have plan B, plan C already, all willing to come out. And so long as they have been given the chance, if they're shortlisted for interview, Mm -hmm. I think many potential employers will find this a refreshing uh, Mm. difference in terms of people are are changing and, and, and even the more mature ones are willing right. to take that opportunity. Being flexible and, and kind of adapting to the yes. situation is a very, very good characteristic to have, you know, especially if you're a senior trying to find re-employment. We're going to talk a bit more about how we can make the most of the wealth of experience that our seniors have and also how to great, create great relationships intergenerationally uh, within the workplace. It's all going to talk to Helen Lim, who's my guest today, about this. If you're a senior and you'd like to find out a bit more about re-entering the workforce or you have questions about how to relate to your co-workers or your colleagues uh, if you are a senior re-entering the workforce as well. You can give us a ring on the studio hotline and Helen will answer your questions. 669-11938 We'll continue this conversation in just a bit. Reset your relationships in Between Us. Our soulful encounter is always just between us on 938 Live. Chatting today about how seniors can age actively and also find re-employment by building great relationships in the workplace. Helen Lim is my guest today and she is founder of Silver Springs Singapore. Now Helen, tell us a bit about you know some of the, the issues that a lot of people re-entering the workforce face when it comes to the mentality of the employers. Uh, is it true that sometimes employers don't want to hire uh, seniors because they have misconceptions about them? Yes, Angela. I, I feel that uh, out there in the workplace, there is still an entrenched attitude that um, it is difficult to work with older people. Uh, they are one type. They are very stuck. They are very slow. They are unproductive. Yes, at over age, I think we are physically not so adept and not so so quick. And therefore, for example, in the healthcare, you know, the the, the, the nurses that come back may not want to go back to the, the very uh, intense uh, 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 operating theatre area. But they are fantastic in terms of many other areas that are less physically demanding in terms of using their c- ability to anticipate, the ability to solve problems because of the experiences that they have accumulated over time. So this power of anticipating, I think, is what they can contribute most, you know. So I think if uh, employers can, you know, step forward and give the opportunity by also changing their own mindset that uh, there are more than one category of uh, older people, that there are many who are open, who are more adaptable, more realistic today. Mm. It's really about, you know, also, you know, in some ways changing your idea of what, the, you know, the, the seniors can offer. Uh, tell us a bit about some things that you feel, I mean, talking to all your, all the clients, the people in the community as well. Uh, what do you think are some things that, you know, seniors can offer that, you know, we don't really appreciate enough of? Yes. I see, for example, in my job portal now, we have almost 600 people and they range from 40 all the way to 70. A a majority are in their 50s and they really come with that ability of um, the level of maturity. Uh, They are more reliable. They are more disciplined in terms of uh, uh, coming to work, you know. And actually, really, they have less... um, uh, 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 
practices in terms of taking leave uh, or sick leave uh-huh. or reporting sick, you know. And and I say this not at the expense of uh, uh, the younger ones, but if you uh, look at the older ones, they are so proud to tell you they they may have cough and cold now and then, and mm-hmm. and and uh, if they are not. Running a risk in terms of spreading it in the office, they will still come in to to mm. contribute. So, so this thing about uh, if you get older, you are, you are sick more often, mm. is not founded, mm. you know, in in many ways. And I think today, you know, Angela, in terms of the workplace, uh, things are changing. My forty years in HR has actually seen uh, many changes, particularly in recent times, where many people who are uh, younger have taken a uh, manager role, mm. and now if the older candidates come in, having to report to them, they may be as old as their father or their mother. Yeah. So this is this is challenging, but at the same time, it can provide a lot of opportunity mm. because the older ones can bring a lot of stability, can actually be you know the the, the back voice for the the, the younger managers mm. to share with them some of the uh, experiences they've gone through when they were working. Right, we're going to find out, Helena, and that's fascinating as well because that's going to happen increasingly as we you know hit an aging yes. population as well. There'll be more you know older people in the workforce who might have to report to someone who's a lot younger than them. There can be tensions, there can be conflicts sometimes if you don't know how to navigate these waters. So we're going to find out more from you, Helen, uh, what you think as well about both sides. You know, how seniors can adjust better into re-entering the workforce and also how the younger generations can learn to communicate more effectively uh, and build great relationships in the workplace. Helen Lim is my guest today. She's founder of Silver Spring Singapore and we're talking about how seniors can age actively and find re-employment while also building really good relationships in the workplace. If you'd like to ask Helen any questions about today's topic, feel free to call in 669-11938. Someone to tell it to is a fundamental human need and what you say stays between us on 938 Live. It's always just between us, right? Chatting today with my guest Helen Lim, who's founder of Silver Springs Singapore, talking about how seniors can age actively and also coping with re-employment to building great relationships in the workplace. Now, Helen, let's talk a little bit about the self-esteem issues that you know do come up sometimes. You mentioned that one of the most challenging things to deal with is to build up the self-esteem of seniors who want to re-enter the workforce. Can you share what that's like for you? Yes. One thing I find, uh, Angela, when I started to uh, having to coach uh, people who are recommended to me, people who have lost their jobs and been out of job for more than six months, getting highly anxious. I think one of the most critical factor is the loss of self-confidence. And how do we help them through some patient uh, talking to them, helping them to discover their strengths back, you know. And so that is like uh, what my Silver Spring represents is put the bounce back in their lives, mm. give them a bit of hope, you know, that uh, they have got strengths in there. It's out to show to the, the, the potential employers. So the first thing that is very important is build that, that self-confidence, get them ready for the interview and hoping, you know, to reach out to potential employers who see this as an opportunity because it's beneficial to have these people back to work because they have got all the experience um, hidden in there, very, very willing to come out to mm. contribute back to, to, to help their younger teammates you know, in the workplace. Mm. So I think that, that is important. And I think if the, even if their supervisors, as I mentioned earlier, are now getting younger, as young as their children, <laughs> but if there is this uh, capacity to respect at any age, uh, I think that will be the most important in terms of today's uh, very dynamic organization is all about uh, uh, communication, clarity, good co- conversations, that if people can take age out of it, it's about um, the skills you have, the, the capability to uh, add uh, as an important teammate, I think that's the most important. So this ability to respect, you cannot um, uh, have that in policies. It's not about mm, policies. No. It's about coming from the heart in terms right. of respecting any age, being sensitive, mm. being uh, encouraging, you know, mm. and, and creating and uh, nurturing a sense of belonging that you are here, you are important, you have contributed and we can celebrate. Mm. It's a mindset shift in the way, you know, Helen, because, you know, like you say, you can't like, administrate this, you can't make this into something that everyone is forced to do. But if individually we can all take responsibility for the way we behave toward the seniors in our, in our workplace, that can change a lot.
lot. Uh, what are some ways you feel you can, you know, we can all, you know, in our ge- younger generation, build build these seniors up, make them feel welcome, make them feel like they're part of the office environment again, uh, because at the start especially, it might be a bit hard to adjust. Yeah. Tell us a bit more. That's right. And in the, in the context of organization, we know that there are business goals to achieve. There are many uh, 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 financial plans, business plans uh, to accomplish. And I think if you then are driven by the fact that people who are experienced, who are coming in, are able to contribute, so long as you invite them in the manner that respects their previous experience and f- forgetting about the, 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 the petty things about, uh, uh, you know, different styles of, of behavior, mm. but just talk about the goals. And I think really I've seen so many cases uh, and I've got many success stories to share how enlightened uh, 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 SME leaders, you know, who are as young as in their mid-40s, but if so long as they can feel and the benefit of having people 20 years older than them coming in to help them to fill this gap in terms of the business development. And I've got a success story. Uh, just uh, two years ago, I put somebody like that, 60, who already thought that she, he was downhill because, uh, <laughs> you know, even... even Past his, uh, his prime, perhaps. Yes, know, yeah. and how, how because of his previous experience in uh, professional selling in a very, very uh, established MNC, he brought that in with uh, full of zest, you know, to this company. And within two years, just barely two years, he has actually helped improve the revenue of the company from two million to... S- mm. Hefty 17 million. Wow, that's amazing. And, and it comes from both parties as well. The employer being very young herself, starting this business. Uh, she was open, you know, to having and appreciating what, you know, this uh, this client of yours had. It's 60 plus years old, but a wealth of experience uh, for her to tap on. Let's talk about the other side of the story where seniors are re-entering the workforce. What are some good qualities to develop or some, some uh, mentalities to have that might be really beneficial for everybody? Yes. Even continue on this story about the 60 plus. Huh? Mm. But because... Although he was a bit down in terms of uh, having not worked in the MNC uh, or, or, or a big organization for some time, but when given this chance, you can see him suddenly, you know, with this uh, uplift, you know, in, in the spirit that he was willing to work seven days a week, you know, for, for a long period of time because he knew that he was contributing. Mm. So I think um, with regard to um, uh, seniors who are a bit down, by t- helping them to discover what were they accomplishing before? What were their achievements? What were some of the things that they were proud to tell? Mm. And then having, and I think when you give them this encouragement, suddenly you see their eyes lit up, yeah. you know, that yes, I think I can do it. And age is no more of an uh, issue because lifespan is now mm. 80 for men and 85 for women. I cannot be moaning, moaning and, and staying at home if I'm just now 55 or 60, you know, there's another 20 good years Mm -hmm. of my life, you know, what can I do? And I think once you can get them to be awakened, I think our our role really I find in Silver Spring is to help people to help themselves. Mm -hmm. So I feel very fulfilled when we can do that. And it's not about just um, uh, dictating or or, or pushing people. It's actually help them to awaken from the inside. Mm. And then I suppose applies to everyone, you know, all the seniors out there as well. You know, Helen, if you can tap into that fire uh, that they used to have, you know, a lot of them, you know, kind of sometimes all of us as well in the younger generation, sometimes we fizzle out, we burn out a little bit and we forget the things that we're proud of that really motivate us. So as loved ones, even in the home, you know, we can turn to our grandmothers or grandfathers or, you know, fathers and mothers and say, you know, hey, what what, what used to, to make you feel proud and and motivated and happy and bring that out in them. Is that yeah. something we can do? That's right. I think it's this spirit of encouragement and I think the more we we um, uh, identify and gather around people who are positive-minded, who are like-minded, mm. I think that helps, you know. I think I think energy gets set when you are together always in a complaining mode or mm. negative mode. But once you get up and say, I want to be with more of the active group. And on, on this note, I want to share that I'm also chair chairing a cooperative called Silver Horizon Travel Cooperative. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been three years now and uh, it is uh, the tagline is uh, 
uh, designed to enjoy is uh, seniors helping seniors in travel. So if there are very young uh, listeners out there, you can get your parents to come and join us. Just go into Silver Horizon Travel and, and you find that uh, they can go all the way to Switzerland, Japan, or as near as Yongping, you know, for, for a one-day trip. Yeah. And I think when they feel that they're other active uh, uh, ages, our oldest is 89 years young. <laughs> and uh, his, he and his wife, who is also in her 80s, have gone on so many trips of ours, you know, that uh, they can be an inspiration. Mm. So I think it's about, really about how we can inspire, you mm. know, uh, each other and help each other along. Surrounding each other, I suppose surrounding yourself, especially with very positive people, people who are really active. I think that's something that's very important to being happy and, and aging actively as well. Let's talk a bit more about your personal views, Helen, about, you know, staying active and into the golden years also, because you are clearly very motivated, <laughs> very passionate, and, you know, and clearly very, very happy with what you're doing now. So let's talk a bit about, you know, what active aging means to you. Maybe you can give our listeners some tips as well on how to kind of find a lot of fulfillment, uh, even in old age. Let's uh, talk a little bit more in just a bit when we continue with Between Us. My guest today is Helen Lim, and she's founder of Silver Spring Singapore. Reset your relationships in between us. Our soulful encounter is always just between us on 938 Live. Discussing how our seniors can age actively and find re-employment while building great relationships in the workplace. My guest today is Helen Lim, who's founder of Silver Spring Singapore. Helen, tell us uh, some of the skills that we can kind of, you know, encourage to our seniors to develop as well when they re-enter the workforce. Yes, personally for me, you know, now at the age of 67 years young, I would actually just label myself as an accidental entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Uh, I came from the public sector and then the commercial uh, sector as a HR professional, and I could have just retired. But my own awakening came from seeing people 10 years older than me who say it's not about retiring, it's about finding something that you, you find meaningful. You know? So for me, naturally, I wanted to help people. Uh, to to find some meaning in life, so I felt that I could do a lot through coaching, yeah. career coaching, one on one, just having a co- coffee conversation, and um, when the, somebody walks off feeling inspired, feeling that they could do something. So I think what drives me is having people take ideas into action. I find too many of us maybe sit, talk about ideas, and then wallow in self pity when the positive turns into negative when they felt that, oh, no, these are excuses mm. or I don't think I can do this. I'm already old, you know. And then you, you get into that. But how I can, you know, inter- intercept, intervene and be the catalyst, be the change agent to say, stop doing that. There are many things you can do and you know, what are the things that you like to do? And these are the hidden talents, you know. And I've heard stories of engineer suddenly discovering that they love baking ah, or somebody yes. who is um, a financial professional say actually i love sewing from young mm. i would love to be to learn how to sew and i would love to learn how to draw you know or, or be a photographer and go mm. traveling uh, uh, with with uh, uh, video and photography as my my main interest now mm. so when you hear this and you say yes all of us hidden right inside is this childhood dream and if there are many of us who can help each other to bring that forth I think is mm. what I, I and I, I think I'm blessed with uh, good family support and also friends who encourage me to uh, continue you know mm. to um, you know for, for as long as I can stay healthy and active to help others mm. along the way and in a way when I help others I'm helping myself yeah. to stay active because I've got this commitment to, to, to continue to do that right. so I'm actually is, is, is a, is a, 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 a favour and a service to myself yeah, I feel. everyone wins in that situation and I love the idea you know of, of revisiting what you want you know your childhood dream as well because what better time to do it now than you know exploring all these things that you've always wanted to try but never really had a chance to because you were working or you were too busy raising the children so, so now's a good time to think about it and as loved ones what would you say to, to people who are listening now who have seniors at home who are thinking I want to go into the workplace but sometimes you're just a bit overprotective about them going to the workplace place you're thinking you know why don't you just retire and relax at home i can look after you you know so what would you say to 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 listeners and how would you help them encourage seniors to stay active yeah because i've got um uh, 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 quite a number of people who have come to me because they told me their daughter or their son have asked them to seek out 
Silver Spring. Mm -hmm. And I feel that having this kind of success stories, I'm actually now appealing to more young listeners outside to say, go, tap your your, your mum or dad on the shoulder and say, (laughs) go, seek out Silver Spring, seek out Helen Lim, and um, uh, explore, you know, and discover your hidden talents. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to create a platform uh, and where I'm going to ask people to come Instead of show me your money, it's show me your talent. Mm. You know, so I, I, nice. I think I, we are going to create interesting and exciting things so that it is all about fun. And at the same time, you never know. The fun and the hobbies can turn into a business. Can mm-hmm. turn. We can help these people to become entrepreneurs as well yeah. in their last phase of their, their, their life before uh, they, they, yeah. they decided to, mm. you know. Uh, uh, hang up their their shoes. Right, it's, lo- it's lovely work you're doing, Helen. It's all you know, motivating our seniors, helping them you know live their dreams in a way. And also, you know, we've learned so much from you today. And if you want to find out more uh, about what Helen does, and also if you're a senior looking uh, to find ways to motivate yourself or to find reemployment, and you know, want some advice on how to have great relationships in the workplace, you can head on down to the Silver Spring website. It's www.silverspring.com.sg. www.silverspring.com.sg. And if you want to ask. Helen Helen, any questions about today's discussion or in general, you can email Helen at helenlim at silverspring.com.sg. Helen, thank you so much for coming in today. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for having me, Angela. Helen Lim, founder of Silver Spring Singapore. This has been Between Us. I'm Angela Lim. Thanks for joining us. Someone to tell it to is a fundamental human need. And what you say stays between us on 938 Live.